I want to highlight this American flag here. These vehicles were actually built in a special manufacturer, in a special factory that was just recently built in Detroit, a $1.8 billion facility. And the first thing they did was start making these. Okay, so they are one, American made. And two, really want to make sure that, that, that we show that by showing you these little trinkets here. We call them Easter eggs as far as the Jeep community goes. The motor in this one is a 3.66 cylinder. So when you talk about Jeep, you're going to talk about the stylings and you're going to talk about the motors. Those are two things that have always been central to Jeep as well as our four-wheel drive system. The 3.6 motor is something that is going to give you the power you need as far as being on the highway, getting around a vehicle. And it's also going to help you in terms of fuel economy. Okay? Now if I go ahead and close this, I don't know if you can see this camera here. This vehicle is actually equipped with a night vision camera. So um, when it's nighttime, when it's dark outside, this camera can see up to 100 feet out, anything that's four feet or higher. What I mean by that is if we're driving in terms of deer, animals, things crossing on the, on the, on the highway or on the back roads, even in our own driveways, let's say we're trying to get out and there's a kid's bike or some toys or something, whatever it is, that camera actually picks it up. Again, want to highlight the wider, the wider lights, how everything is LED, and again, how it wraps around the front here. One, aesthetically, very pleasing. And then two, safety-wise, the bigger the light is, the brighter things are, the better our visibility. From the side here, you can actually see that the forward, okay? Reason for that being is, again, being in a third, third row vehicle, you want to maximize your visibility to make sure you feel as comfortable as possible as you're driving. By slanting the grill forward, it allows us to slope our hood downwards, which is going to give us a really big field of vision as we're driving in our vehicle. And again, it's a Jeep, so you can't forget about the seven-slot grill. Another Jeep feature is always going to be the trapezoidal wheel arches here. So, seven slot grills, trapezoidal wheel arches, um, Easter eggs that like we like to call it in terms of like the American flag on this vehicle. Those are things that when you see, you know it's a Jeep. Now, as we're on the outside of this vehicle and have everything closed, engineering wise, what they did was they brought the belt line down. What I mean by that is if you come over here, we like to call this the guideline or the belt line, depending who you're talking to. By bringing that belt line down, we brought the center of gravity down. And again, gives you more visibility when you're driving. When they redesigned this vehicle, because it's not just a Grand Cherokee with a third row, it is a complete redesign. They built the engine on top of the axle and your transmission actually runs through your engine. What that enables you to do is have a lower center of gravity. So even if you are in a bigger vehicle, which you will be, you don't have to deal with the body roll or the, 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 the roughness that you would typically associate with your drive. So very first thing we see when we get into this vehicle is going to be our brand new Uconnect 5 with a 10.1 inch display. My favorite thing about this is it'll automatically do a split screen for you between a navigation and another page. In this instance, it has navigation and it has media. Let's say I want to zoom in on media. I can either press the media button here or I can just hit full screen right there. Okay. What I really want to highlight is our navigation. So with the navigation, they did a complete retool. What I mean by that is, this vehicle is going to give you connected services, and in this instance, being the Uconnect 5, things like TomTom, Tom, things like Apple CarPlay, they're already going to be built into the system. Um, let's say I want to come right here to the dealership. First thing you're going to notice is, this does have a predictive feature. So I'm at 460 Connecticut Boulevard. It gives me all the 460 Connecticut Boulevards or Avs that I could use. In this case, it's right here in East Hartford. Click on that. You have a couple options. I can just hit drive, or if I can hit this right here, I can use it as a starting point. I can add to favorites, or I can search near here. So if I'm looking for restaurants, gas stations, hotels near my destination, that's how I would do it. Okay, once I hit drive here, your screen will change to tell you, obviously, how far away you are, when you'll be there. If I want to get out of the screen, I just hit X and now I go back to a map view, okay? It is touch screen, so I can move around. I can zoom out. I can zoom in. And if you notice how fast it moves, there is not a lag, okay? Which obviously when we deal with things like this, we want to avoid a lag. If you can see from where you are there, as I move around the screen, depending how zoomed in I am, it'll show me streets, it'll show me flow of traffic, and it'll show me points of interest. Things like gas stations, things like restaurants, things like hotels are all going to pop up on here, okay? This three line bar here, this menu, if I click on this, I can do things like add home, add work, see what recents I might have been to, and see what trips I might have taken. I hit settings here. I can adjust the map view, routing, sounds and alerts. For example, routing, if I click on this, I can do different route types. What I mean by that is if I can click on it, you can choose between the fastest route 
the shortest route in terms of how many miles you'll drive and the most eco-friendly route as well. Again, we, we want to make sure that you get where you want to be, but you get there in a way that you want to get there. If I get out of here, I can avoid ferries, trains, toll roads, even things like unpaved roads, interstate highways, carpool lanes, and tunnels. So again, make sure that where you want to go, you get there in a way that makes sense for you. Right here where it says vehicle, I can click on vehicle, and I have a couple options in the car itself. What I mean by that is you have your mirror dimmer, you have third row headrest fold, so if the third row seats are up and I want to be able to get a clear field of vision to the back, I can press that button and have them come down. You have a surround camera on this vehicle. So if I click on this here, not only do you have your traditional backup camera, you have a surround view of the vehicle, 360 degrees. That's what the cameras are for on, on the outside of the vehicle. And you have different views. So behind me, a fish eye view behind me, fish eye view ahead of me, zoomed in view ahead of me. And I can do a bigger screen here where I can zoom in. Again, if I'm using that tow hitch, make sure I get to where I need to be. And you also have the vehicle equipped with a front camera. Everything has guidelines. So whether I'm in the front here, let's say I need to follow these red lines here. I can adjust the wheels to make sure that I'm on path, same as I can when I'm behind me. And if my camera gets dirty from off-roading, now it's clean. That, that was pretty cool, actually. So, my favorite part about the interior, obviously aside from the aesthetics part of it, is how practical it is. Focused on the horizontal layout. What I mean by that is, as I'm driving, I just looked at my screen five times, not once that I turned my head. If we turn our head, we're not looking at the road, we just put ourselves and others in danger. By having everything pushed back and have everything leaning back as well, I don't know if you can see it from here, everything is leaned backwards. So again, I have maximum visibility while staying as safe as possible, okay? Everything I can do on the screen, I can do through buttons and through toggles. What that enables us to do is make sure that if I'm driving, I don't distract myself with the screen because I know what this button does. I know what that button does. I know if I want to turn on my fan, I can raise and lower it from here. Do a climate control so if I'm hot and you're cold, we can adjust accordingly. You also have your buttons here for your heated seat, heated steering wheel, and your ventilated seats. So your first row gives you heated seat, heated steering wheel, ventilated seats. You can tell when you have perforated seats like this, it means that they're air conditioned seats. Your second row actually gets heated seats as well. When it's under 40 degrees, your heated seat and steering wheel will automatically start, whether you start it from your phone, the key fob, or from inside the vehicle. When it's over 75 degrees, your ventilated seats will automatically kick on, same way, okay? If we zoom in right in here, we can see again, make sure everything stays charged. You have two USB ports, two Type-C ports, an auxiliary cable port, and then if I pop this open here, you do have a space for a traditional car charger. But again, everything nowadays is wireless, so right in the middle here, you have a wireless charger for your phones, okay? If we focus on this section here, this toggle is how we're gonna go ahead and shift gears, okay? This being a Jeep, you're gonna have different drive modes for different terrains. Now our four-wheel drive system is an automatic four-wheel drive system. What I mean by that is in our vehicle, let's say my front left tire hits a patch of ice. The system is made to send power to that tire to make sure it doesn't lose traction so you don't worry about spinning out in the first place, okay? These different modes here are gonna do different things to the drivetrain. For example, if I throw it in rock mode, what's gonna happen is four-wheel drive low is going to engage because in that instance, I'm off-roading and I need to get over a boulder. If I put it in snow mode, you're going to start off in second gear versus first gear to make sure you have maximum traction to get you out of those snow banks. On the side here, this toggle with the three lines, you have five different ride heights that you can use, okay? Your lowest height here is going to be entry exit level. That's going to be the lowest the vehicle goes, enable you to get in and out really easy. When, it's, when you're driving over 15 miles an hour, the vehicle will automatically raise to make sure that you don't catch your bumper on a rock, a twig, whatever it is. Your highest ride height is going to be off-road too. That's gonna give you at least a two inch lift. That's enabled for if we are off-roading, getting over those logs, those rocks, whatever the case is. Again, if you're over 15 miles an hour, the vehicle will automatically lower to help you save on gas. This being a Summit, you actually have Summit written out in the seat, which is really nice. Going back to the dashboard here, real wood. All the materials here are soft materials to the touch. And the best part about it is even if you're in the third row, you still get the nice materials. A lot of the times with third row vehicles, we find that the third row is just a sea of black plastic and that's what we wanted to avoid we want to make sure if you're driving or if you're in the third row you know you're in a luxury vehicle okay so if you do like the features in the grand cherokee l i advise you to come on down 460 connecticut boulevard Dengris chrysler dodge jeep ram ask for alejandro